Next up, I'm very excited about this, uh, a friend of everyone in this room, Ashley McNamara. Who likes Ashley McNamara? Yeah, we all do, don't we? Okay, so Ashley's going to cut. She's a developer uh, advocate at Microsoft, really focused on cloud native and Go, and is going to be talking to us this morning about something that's so important, not just to everyone in this room, but to everyone who lives on this planet. She's going to be talking about burnout. Big round of applause, please. Oh, hey. So I am Ashley, and I am not a doctor. First, I want to say that I'm not here to give you medical advice. I am here because I am an overachiever, like many of you in this room, which means that we are ripe for burnout. I've seen many of my friends and colleagues burn out, and I don't think that we take mental health seriously in this country. So let's get into it. Raise your hand if you have been burnt out. Oh, so many of you, this industry is trying to kill us. So it turns out you're not alone. Gallup did a study of 7,500 full-time employees. It turns out that two-thirds of them burn out. That is significant. It's kind of unacceptable. Out of the people that burn out, many of them will leave entire industries. And I know this because I was a photographer. I ran a photography and uh, web consulting business for about 10 years. At some point during the prosumer camera age, everyone was a photographer, driving down prices, making me work twice as hard for the same amount of money. So I wrote a blog post saying that photographers were going to be replaced by robots, and I was going to go build robots. I am not building robots. But I haven't picked up a camera since. I do not miss photography. But why are we like this? Why do we continue to burn out? I have a theory, like stick with me. Back in the day, our car, our house, like maybe a nice watch was a status symbol. Now it's being busy. When we ask somebody how they are, they're usually like, man, I'm so tired. Or like, I'm really busy. If you were to be like, super relaxed, everything's great, we would think you're crazy or not important. Many of you know me from Twitter. It's one of my favorite places. This is how we communicate now. We don't call people, that's weird. But on social media, like we have a curated content, right? So we're putting our best foot forward and we're all trying to compete with each other. So it kind of sucks. But also, every like is like one serotonin. So like we're, we become addicted to it. On top of that, we're now constantly available. I have phantom buzzing in my back pocket. I don't even have pockets right now. So like, no wonder we're all anxious all the time. So I love being remote, but I hate that there's often no separation between life and work. On top of all of that, we have hero and startup culture. Startups promise you if you work your ass off, you're going to get rich, you won't have to work as hard. Not true. Oftentimes, the only people that are getting rich off of a startup are the founders, but we are killing ourselves to make them rich. Hero culture, people are too busy saving the day, they're not sharing knowledge, it sucks. How long do you think it takes to even recover from burnout? I learned this recently. It's going to shock you. Six months, a year, two years. Two years to recover from burnout. Experts say that it's so like PTSD that even when you leave an industry, or like even when you move a job, I mean, that there are triggers that will trigger you back into that burnout cycle. So something that you saw at this job that's now occurring over here, it's going to trigger you. Which is why when you feel burnt out, taking your vacation is not enough. If you are recovered after a two week vacation, you are not burnt out. So I think that there are a couple of phases of burnout and I'm hoping that my next slides are so cute that it distracts you from how awkward I am. So first there's the honeymoon phase. 
and I'm an overachiever, which means I say yes to everything because I don't know what my own capacity is. I'm really good at spotting it in other people, but I'm terrible at spotting it in myself. So I'm like, yes, I can't wait to get my hands dirty. And then I figured that I've taken on too much. Um, I'm starting to see the cracks. I'm not volunteering for as much anymore. And my boss is like, you have this great output. Like, what is even happening? So now I'm feeling like not as motivated. But I'm also ruled by guilt. So in 2018, I gained 40 pounds because I was working so hard that I didn't have time to cook. I mean, I don't like to cook, so I was ordering everything. So every meal was ordered, I was sustaining on queso. Queso is delicious, but it's not a food group. So I have kids. I work at home. Like I said, there's no separation. When I'm at work, once I'm kind of on this road to burnout, I'm like, everyone's incompetent. This job sucks. No, you're just not patient anymore. When I'm at home, I'm not engaged. My son's like, Mom, I'm, like, I, I need help with my homework. Or like, I want a snack. Yeah, figure it out, kid. I'm working. This is all for you. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of deep in burnout to the point where, like, why does it, why does it even bother? Like, I don't need to go to work. And like, who cares? It doesn't matter anymore. Nothing matters. So the only thing that my brain can tolerate at this point is cat photos maybe some junk food. Junk food is kind of the only control I have left now, so I'm just gonna keep going. Now I'm here, right, because they're paying me, so I guess I better do something, but I'm not excited about it anymore. I'm also sustaining on caffeine, which is not great. And then we start to see the physical symptoms. Many people, when they are burnt out, they are misdiagnosed with depression. So we're not getting to the root cause, we're covering it up with pills. It also turns out that there are many physical symptoms. Also in 2018, I had surgery for diverticulitis. I learned recently that digestive issues are common in people that burn out. I lost two feet of intestine that year, for what? Oh, here I am now, a total burnout. Nothing matters anymore. I'm probably searching for another, another job. Um, that's my ghost. I'm totally going to haunt my boss. He did this to me. And the next slide, I didn't really know where to put this, but I thought it was a great visualization. So I saw this on Twitter. Um, Johnny Holloman posted it. He said, you can see kind of where I burnt out. So burnout takes a long time. It's not just like a month of hard work. It's like years of hard work. So you can see in 2016, he's killing it. 17, he's killing it. 18, he's like, mm, kind of need a break. And then 2019, he, he's done. Like, he, he, can't, he cannot focus anymore. So I just thought that was cool. So now we're going to get to avoiding burnout. So we all have some personal responsibility in this, right? But it's hard. So first of all, getting clarity in your job. 60% of people don't even know what the hell they're supposed to be doing, so we kill ourselves trying to figure it out because we're at work for a reason, right? We're not, it's not fun. So multitasking. Some of you think you're great at it, you're not. We can't focus on two things at once. We can only do one thing at a time. If you are overloaded with work and your manager comes to you and says, I need you to do this one more thing, Say, what do you want me to drop in order to take this other thing on? Don't keep taking on projects. Okay, slide, cool. Set boundaries. So, <clears throat> know what you're willing to do and what you're not willing to do. Be firm about it. It's okay to say no. The people that work for you, or the people that you work for, are going to continue to ask you to do stuff. They are waiting for you to say no. It's okay to say no. Take control. Like, delete these apps from your phone. Like, you don't even need them. Unless you're on call, there's not a single thing that cannot wait until tomorrow. It is not that important. 
crying out loud, you guys, please get a hobby. If your entire identity is wrapped up in work, you're going to burn out. Get enough sleep. If you work from home, don't work from bed. Your body needs a place to rest. If you are working from bed, then you're not going to get the proper sleep that you need. So the next set I added late, tips for managers. I manage a team of engineers, and I firmly believe that burnout stems from poor management. So I added these next slides. So any of you that manage, uh, please write it down. Be clear about expectations. Like I said, the people that work for you want to know what they need to do. They, they want to get their bonuses. So they will kill themselves trying to figure it out if you do not tell them. Help them understand their value. We want to do well. Enforce reasonable work hours. So some of us are not nine to five, but pick eight hours. Make sure that your reports are sticking to those eight hours. We don't, we, if you cannot finish it in that day, in a reasonable amount of time, it's too big a task. You need to bring other people in to do it. If you are a manager, please do not contact your people after five. They will feel obligated to respond to you, even if you tell them that they don't have to. Encourage people to take their vacation time. There are many people that work for me that don't want to take their vacation time because they feel like when they come back, they will have too much work to do. So I work really hard to make sure that they are covered while they are out so that they can do that. Because even if you feel like you don't need your vacation, you need your vacation. Regular one-on-ones. Your one-on-ones are not for you. The one-on-ones are for the people that report to you. Actively listen. Do they sound stressed? Help them. And I think that this one is the biggest one. So hero culture comes from us only recognizing the big things that people do. And day to day, we're doing a bunch of little things that, that add up. So help them recognize what's important through the small stuff too. And lastly, Remember why you're even doing this? So if you're burnt out, the people at home are suffering too. You're not present. Uh, like I said, remember why you're doing this. And I'm done. I did it on time. Follow me on Twitter. Thank you.